standard that I was teaching was classifying shapes as solid three-dimensional shapes or flat two-dimensional shapes. The students also tied in describing the shapes and the shape names into those categories, but our main focus today was to really focus on using that vocabulary flat and solid, two-dimensional and three-dimensional. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start, and today we are going to talk about shapes that are flat and shapes that are <coughs> solid. Okay. We started with a small mini lesson on the carpet, reviewing flat shapes and solid shapes, and what shapes were flat shapes and what shapes were solid shapes. And then the kids branched off and went to their tables. Then from there, they did a partner activity where they wore necklaces. Some of them had two-dimensional flat shapes and some of them had three-dimensional solid shapes. And they were paired with a partner and they were asked to use those special terminologies in their writing, but also describe that shape with their partner. Students learn best from each other. Each student has a different background that they can share with that student, have it has a different knowledge in that content area. And sometimes it just takes them talking to another student for them to understand it. And I truly feel like in my classroom that they learn best from each other. Yes, the teacher is important to facilitate the learning, but I truly feel like when the kids are talking, they're learning the best. Is it two dimensions? I do a lot of walking around the room and asking them to explain to me what are you doing? Can you tell me what you are doing? Getting, making sure they're using that terminology that I'm looking for. If they're able to use that terminology in the right context, I feel that they're grasping that skill. So what could be the first sentence on your paper? The sphere is solid. No, the sphere is solid. Three dimensions. It's three dimensional. And then the sphere is... Solid. Solid. Very good. And then you can describe it. So go ahead and put that on your paper first. Okay. With the Florida standards, um, we're looking for writing to be tied into other content areas, tying it into reading, tying it into math. And that's another thing I feel like if they can think through the process and put it down on paper, they're really understanding it as well. The triangle has three vertices. The triangle has three sides. And then from there we branched off and did four centers where they got to work in small groups. And one center was a castle building center where they had to build a castle using three-dimensional and two-dimensional shapes and then record how many of each that they used. They also did a real world sort items from around the classroom, around the school, putting those in the right categories. They also did a mystery bag center where the students were not allowed to look inside the bag. They had to feel and describe that shape to their friends and see if they were able to guess what shape it was. It gets one point, it gets one curve, it gets wide, it gets roll in a circle. Do you know what my shape is? A cone. It's a cone. You got it right. You got it wrong. It's a cone. And then my last center was just a basic sorting the actual shapes. Were they flat or were they solid? And then drawing those on the appropriate sides. Each center, I felt like, gave them a different opportunity to see shapes in a different aspect. This is a cone. This is a sphere. This is, this is a cylinder. And those are rectangles. Shapes are really that foundational skill to math. And if you can keep it fun, there's always things around the house that you can use. Blocks, anything around the house, drawing, constructing with shapes, playing with shapes, building shapes out of Play-Doh, anything just to keep it fun, keep it engaging for those students versus just showing them shapes and asking them to recognize them. Getting them to Think through problems, think through questions that are posed to them instead of just coming up with a short answer, really getting them to think about what they're doing and why are they doing and how can I make this better or what's not working, really getting them to think and problem solve is definitely important. We can do